This Casual Friday is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Where's the cable? I have no idea, actually. Uh, it's a little disturbing. That's amazing. You're, I know where the cable is. I was born for this. I don't know what that means. So E3 is over. We survived. Yeah. Oh, God, that went by so fast. It went by really fast. Um, Cisco here mm -hmm. was at home, back here at home base. I think all the uh, cut downs. So yeah, those cut down trailers that people might have seen of like, here's the whole press conference in two minutes. Yep. That was you. How did you? That was, that was intense. This that was your was... first E3 with us. How was that? It was difficult. Yeah. Got through the day. There's a, there a tweet comparing our cut downs to like other outlets and our stuff like that. We had the yeah, shortest one. Yeah, everyone else cut them down to five minutes, four minutes. You did two too. Minutes. That's some good editing. And, I, and you managed to do that and leave in stuff like that fucking awful moment that I can't stop thinking about in the EA all press the feels, conference. All the feels. The all the feels guy. <laughs> oh, oh my god. That was so bad. Nightmare. Makes me uncomfortable thinking about it actually. And I, then what really makes me uncomfortable is when you start to think about like, which is worse, that he was going off script and that was unplanned, or that that was written in and like dictated, like we're Ooh. gonna get to the kids with some shitty Tumblr memes. So I think it was somewhere in the middle where he planned it on his own off script. That's maybe the worst of both worlds, yeah. yeah. So it was yeah. premeditated, which premeditated. I'm pretty sure how Terrible. that works in criminal law is that it's worse if it's premeditated. For sure. And nobody knew accident. it was coming. Uh, so uh, I guess in that regard, is. this E3 was a huge success. I mean, success. They're, yeah, they're on their way up. Yeah, um, no giant enemy point. crabs. <laughs> Um, nothing hugely embarrassing in any of the other press conferences, I didn't think. We saw yeah, a bunch right. of games at E3 this mm -hmm. year. Yep. Like, no nothing mind-blowing, necessarily. But, like, just, I, I like that all the press conferences, it seems like a no-brainer, like 2020 hindsight, but all three press conferences, for the most part, focused on fucking video games. And that's, like... Yeah. And it felt good. Like, it felt like each one felt pretty solid. Like, you know, there's some years where it's, like, Dude, Microsoft or PlayStation, they killed it, they won. You're primarily a PC gamer. Yeah. So like, when you go into an event like E3 that is relatively console-centric, like, what are the exciting, like, what excited you, I guess, well, in this E3? the one thing is, you know, uh, that I was super excited for was a GTA V PC yes. announcement. And we got that, right? Uh, yeah, we did, at the Sony press I remember, conference. I remember you being not quite sure if they were going to announce it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, they skipped know. Red Dead. There was never a PC version well, yeah, of Red Dead. Well, yeah, but that was Rockstar San Diego. Right. So, Every GTA has come out since like San Andreas. six months after the console release, and it's coming close to like nine months now. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know, but... It's, I'm glad they're doing it. it. It felt, there was enough leaked things out there that seemed to indicate we were getting a PC version. It's yeah. gonna be amazing. Like, dude, yeah, probably. Most, a, are, you, are you really, really excited to play it? Dude, yes. Man, okay, first of all, GTA 5 is like the best playing GTA by a landslide. Second of all, yeah. if you look at how GTA 4 on PC looked after mods, Oh, the prettiest seriously. video game ever. Like, yeah, seriously. It's gonna be and cool. And just all the shit you could do with mods. Yeah. Compared to the console version. God, I, sometimes I just lie in my bed at night and stare at the ceiling and think about how great Red Dead Redemption would have been with mods. And I'm just like, we'll It'll, never know. We'll yeah. never know how great that would have been. Um, it's, it's depressing. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a, one of the greatest tragedies in video games, actually. In really human history, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, watching that GTA V trailer that they showed during Sony's press conference, um, my initial thought was like, what game is this? Because I didn't recognize Me it. Me too. Because I didn't recognize it either. So good. And the other thing is that playing GTA V on consoles, and you're gonna love this. Yeah. The frame rate was really bad. Awful. It, it was, was the worst. Like borderline, not unplayable, but unpleasant and noticeable. Yeah. And like a, G a version of GTA V with a smooth frame rate and like even prettier graphics. Like, mm -hmm. dude, that's gonna be my shit. Not everything though that came out of C3 was super positive. I feel like literally every game got either. Pushed to 2015 or announces a 2015. Yeah, game. that was kind of my biggest disappointment. Like, basically after E3 kind of ended and we kind of like saw all the announcements that were going to be made, mm -hmm. I was like, oh great, next E3 is going to really suck because it's going to be watching right. new trailers of the same games again <laughs> Cause because none of them are coming out this year. What like what? Just I mean, a bunch are, but not what, like not that many. Like not that a, many. a lot of stuff the got important pushed. ones. A lot of Far Cry 4 is coming out, which sure. I'm really excited about and, because it's one uh, of the most exciting games I think. Captain Toad's for me. Treasure Tracker on the Wii U is, and I think there might be one or two other Wii U games, but when I went to Nintendo's booth and did that booth tour, like, yeah. uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, whatever Project Robot is, the new Kirby game, the new Yoshi game, yep. all those are 2015. Yeah, the Witcher totally th crazy, honestly, from Nintendo. Well, I think so, but I mean, at least there are Wii U games to care about. That's already a step in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, but it's always, a, it's always a carrot on the end of the stick. Yeah, anyways. maybe. Well, but then you've got, like, the Witcher 3 got delayed. It was supposed to be 2014, right. like fall 2014, now it's 2015. Um, Batman got pushed to 2015. Which I didn't expect. Well, anyways, whatever. I saw that that gameplay demo a while ago and I thought it was more complete than I yeah, guess it, it is. I don't I, know. I mean, based on my time with it, it feels the combat's there. I guess it's just a matter of getting the content there. Um, yeah, who knows? 
Uh, it could, who knows, that car that destroys every yeah. object it drives through could be a problem. Maybe. Who knows? And then uh, Halo 5, which we basically didn't see at Microsoft's press conference, other than that five second multiplayer right. pre-rendered CGI thing. Which was pretty cool. Like. The yeah. Halo remastered. Oh, that see oh, that the, is going to be my jam. The Master Chief it's funny, collection. Like, I, yeah. I think people might underestimate how completely gangbusters Master Chief Collection is going to do because there's a whole generation of people our age so I who actually, grew up on Halo. Right, and I actually think they realized that, and and that's why I bet you they're ready. They were ready to announce something more about Halo 5. Mm -hmm. And they chose not to right. because they didn't want to undermine the Master Chief Collection announcement. It's a I think that's really smart because I think so many people are going to be so pumped about that. It's a great... Like, I can't wait. It's a brilliant stopgap. To be honest, there is this huge generational shift happening and like these major franchises are going to take time to make games that are actually impressive with this hardware. I, I'm not totally upset by the idea. Because, I mean, okay, even just the value proposition, right? Of $60 and you get Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3 and Halo 4, all the single player, all the multiplayer, every map, running in its original engine, like, that's significant, I think. I'm hoping that Halo 1 at, ships with the multiplayer that is as broken as it originally was, with the pistol being the most yeah, ridiculous, that's what killing I want. dudes in two shots or three shots three on shots. the other side of the map it, it was on the, Blood Gulch. I mean, that is part of it. It is, is it broken? Yes. Do I want that? Yes, yeah. I do, actually. I want that broken game. That I can just I can hear the sniper rifle sound from Halo One ringing in my ears as you say that. That that smoke trail. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I can't wait. So, anyways, that's actually something I, I I wasn't actually remembering from from E3 that I actually am really excited yeah. about. The just, first the thing that stole the show for me was the Far Cry Four, mm -hmm. which now I hope is I hope they actually deliver. I'm on being, so skeptical now. For real? <laughs> After Watch Dogs, yeah. Yeah, After that's the a, whole Watch Dogs PC the thing is, performance. Oh, so you're skeptical graphically because you're a PC gamer. That's all you care about. But well, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know what they did, right? With Watch Dogs, like, oh, the E3 settings in there in the options. Explain it. Explain that. Sorry. And it's then, crazy. yeah, I don't like, know the details on this actually. It's so like it's Ubisoft, unlockable. Like you know how Watch Dogs look really, really pretty. At yeah, E3 with the raindrops freezing in midair and all yeah. that stuff. So, yeah, the E3 demo. Yeah, right. It looked so gorgeous. This was a and demo, then but. it came out and it was running like shit on everyone's PC. Like even good PCs, like they were not running a game that didn't look very well, well, mm -hmm. yeah. if that makes sense. And then so someone found like files in the game that were already in the game, but like disabled. And now there's a mod out that makes Watch Dogs look like the E3 demo Whoa. and play really well. Like run way better, way yeah. better optimized. It's wild and it shows, I think, I don't know, it just feels like publishers don't super duper care about PC gaming. Oh, yeah. The bigger disappointment for me with Watch Dogs though, graphics aside, was that I just, I don't think the potential that they, they implied with that initial demo, especially with the seamless multiplayer stuff, was yeah. in any way present in the game. They made it look cool the one time. Yeah, and, and that's why I'm more optimistic about Far Cry 4, is because we've all played Far Cry 3 and know that that shit's fun as hell already. Right. Like, they got, as long as they don't make it, it literally, it can, because what they as are showing. As long as it's more Far Cry 3. I'm happy. I'm interested it's in cool. the setting. The setting looks really cool. Yeah. Like, Nepal or India, those yeah. parts of the world. And more wingsuit. It's um, another bright colored green grass blue sky setting, yeah. and that's what was great about Far Cry. Like, it's almost not even Far Cry 4, it's Far Cry 3 too. As excited as I am. New bad guy that looks cool. Mm -hmm. uh, really pretty setting. Elephants. I am a, I am afraid that they may lean too hard on just having the same Far Cry 3 elements. I would I'd be sad if they just have like the same formula of like outposts, yeah. hunting. Like I really I would like to see a bit of a refresh in that area. It doesn't have to be completely different. It can be very yeah. similar to Far Cry 3 because that was such a great <sighs> game. But I have to say when I did play the uh, Blood Dragon, like expansion thing, I had fun, but it it was not a full game because sure. it was it was so many elements so that derivative. was just reskin. I think my feeling on that is that they can't do it again. They can't make a Far Cry Five that's just the same as Four and Three. One interesting thing though is when they, when I was playing my Far Cry Four demo, um, someone had like accidentally hit the home button on the PlayStation controller and backed out to the menu, and the demo in the menu was called Far Cry Chronicles, not Far hmm. Cry Four. Which leads me to believe that at one point this game was not called Far Cry 4 and it was just a Far Cry 3 pseudo expansion. Like pure speculation, right? But we know that they've done that with Assassin's Creed games before where they realize that if they threw a number on it instead of just calling it Assassin's Creed colon whatever, right, it'll sell more copies. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, just yeah. that's statistically true. If it's if it's a numbered sequel, yep. even if it's a samey game, it won't sell as well. Like that's 
I think that we could potentially, just based on the fact that I saw that it was called something other than Far Cry 4, yeah. um, it's easy to imagine a situation where this wasn't always called that. Um, right. Regardless right. of that though, I think if like jumping from one vehicle into the next, shooting while driving, that riding elephants, that cool. wingsuit all the time. like Elephants? Elephants. elephants. You can right shoot a rocket elephant. launcher off the back of an elephant and blow up a helicopter. You can shoot a rocket launcher at an elephant and kill the elephant. Well, that's wrong. That's, that's wrong. I'm not would saying you, you should. Why would you do that? I'm not saying Nick. you should, but you can. That's the worst thing in the world. And for me, that's enough. Just give me yeah, more. So kill tools. elephants? Yeah. For me, I, just give me more tools to do awful, sick. tragic things in the Far Cry universe, and then you just sold me a copy. That's illegal. I'm going to play it on PC, though. But what about, like, small stuff? Don't, don't. Why'd you fist bump the elephant killer? Oh, because. Oh, I was saying no. something that I didn't really pay attention. <laughs> but like, Inside, really cool. Really cool looking game. The Xbox game. Oh, Inside, I, yeah, the inside. one from the Limbo, Limbo Dead. The one from Play Dead. Got it. I was like, like, it looks inside super Inside the Xbox game. I'm like, which one? It's Major Nelson's new show, Inside the Xbox game. <laughs> but that um, looks so good. It's it like looks sick. Kinda, that trailer was gorgeous. Yeah. I was a little concerned about it being too similar to Limbo. Mm -hmm. But the mood and the tone and the environment like is completely actually different, kinda. completely different. Yeah, and and I'm really ex I'm really into it. It looks maybe structurally similar to Limbo in yeah, terms of you're running like from a, left to right a, a lot. But the fact is maybe way more of an narrative. Right, is really. Exciting. It almost reminds me of like the transition from Bastion to Transistor, mm. and how the games that those guys have been making are both like isometric 2D art games running right. around on this like isometric plane, but they're stylistically different, their gameplay is radically different. I think if Play Dead wants to take the same angle that mm. they did, uh, that, that'll work for them. There was cool shit at E3, basically, is what we're saying. Grim Fandango. Dude, what? Yeah, like that was such a... If you had asked yeah. me to sit down and write a list of every game that's going to get name dropped Completely at Sony's press conference, I would be one. an old man with a long beard and a skeleton body because I'd be dead because I never would have guessed Grim Fandango. I just, I just love that like, We've reached a point in the industry where like people like Sony and Disney and Double Fine can just like get on the phone with each other. It's and awesome. like, let's actually make this happen for the first time in twenty yeah. years. Like, yeah, that's cool. It's a wonderful time to a like. A lot of games. a lot of really cool shit. Yeah. But now we have to wait a million years. Yep. This More is the waiting. worst part. See Except you. for entwined. Out now. Out now. You know what video games have sometimes is swords, and you know what swords are is sharp just like razors, and that's where Dollar Shave Club comes in. Buying razors is a shitty, pain-in-the-ass process. You gotta go all the way to the store, go find an employee to open this razor jail cabinet for you, then pay like an exorbitant amount of money for some ridiculous 500 blade razor that you definitely, definitely do not need to shave your face. Luckily, there's a company that's doing away with all that goofiness, and they're called Dollar Shave Club. Here's how it works. You pay a few bucks a month, sometimes as low as one dollar, and they will ship razors directly to your door as often as you need them. The blades are just as good as the ones you'd get from the big shave companies, but it's at a fraction of the price, so you're not being ripped off constantly. They've got other products too, like Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter and One Wipe Charlie's Butt Wipes for your bottom. Shave time, shave money, and join now at dollarshaveclub.com slash casualfriday.